Okay, today I'm going to try to do the best I can in uh, discussing a subject that I've had a very hard time articulating, but I think it would be a very good idea for, um, for genealogy as a whole. And it, what it is, is c combining basically and setting up, you know, different bodies and organizations to handle different aspects of uh, genealogical research to allow us to, one, certify that certain lines are indeed accurate, two, to um, have standards to be able to certify these things, and three, to have a place to keep these records so people can go to and actually share them as a, basically as a service to the public. Um, my ability to, to set this whole system up is way beyond um, my uh, physical abilities, but not beyond my mental abilities, so I'm going to outline all this stuff now. And then I'm going to discuss a few side issues um, when I get into the evidentiary matter portion of this. Okay, so w what am I talking about? Um, basically, uh, people that are certified in the United States to uh, certify public accounts are, are authorized to go out and to um, audit the financial statements of their um, of various companies and render an opinion on the accuracy of, of the financial statements. So when you read an auditor's report, say you go to the SEC, you're looking at a company that you want to invest in, or maybe you just want to look at a local non-for-profit's financial statements, they have it posted up on their website. Uh, one of the <coughs> first things you're going to see, one of the earliest pages you're going to come across in that re in that set of financial statements is an independent auditor's report. And I'm not going to just talk about audits in applied genealogy. There are two other types of reports that accountants, at least in the United States, do. And I would imagine this, uh, at least the methodology for performing audits uh, applies to both um, people in the United Kingdom, Canada, probably Australia. I think they're probably called chartered accountants. I'm not exactly sure, but nonetheless, um, the principles remain the same, or at least the ones in the United States could be applied. Those are the ones I'm familiar with. And um, <coughs> the purpose of having a genealogical lo line audited would be to um, hopefully the, audit the independent auditor, independent of the researcher, would look at those records and render an opinion that he feels, in all material respects, that they are, are accurate, <laughs> basically, or the genealogical lines are free of material misstatement, is the more proper term to use, in all material respects. Then those, those records would be placed in, basically, a caretaker's another body, a caretaking body's uh, hands to hold on to so other people could look at those pieces of information and know that the lines they're pulling down are, are accurate. This is different than what, what's over at FamilySearch.org uh, that the Mormons have in what they call the International Genealogical Index. Unfortunately, one of the principal um, tenets of auditing is independence, so you know, the Mormons themselves as a body wouldn't necessarily be able to, I mean, they could go through the procedures, but it would be of a quote-unquote lower quality levels if, if, in comparison if someone else were to look over their IGI and uh, render an opinion on it. And I would, <coughs> it's such a large body of records that no one body or group would be able to do that anytime soon, but certain portions can be done very quickly. Um, where do I start there? Um, so auditors use certain tools and techniques or um, I guess assumptions about various things based on the characteristics of the records they're looking at to render an opinion on those records, and they also gather evidence, which they called sufficient competent evidence, um, to back up those, those records and move them on. What's the whole point of doing an audit? Well, the whole point of doing an audit is to get it into a 
quote unquote pristine form to allow other people to share it and not have to duplicate research which is um, now I'm not trying to discount the importance of actually learning a little bit about your ancestors or your siblings lives I think that's a very good thing to do but right now I'm just talking about you know um, audits and, and I guess I'll just go to some examples of why this may be important or necessary so I've been doing some work on the Chichester genealogy and I've been researching um, the earliest Chichesters that are, had come to America and one was a William Chichester and one was a James Chichester and they both at one point were a. William and an A. James Chichester were, were at Salem and inside the Salem church records uh, you'll look and you can see that there's um, a Mrs. Chichester listed and there's a William Chichester who has children baptized uh, only by virtue of uh, the, <laughs> the, the children being announced as children of Mrs. Chichester okay and then um, other court records establish that William Chichester is the wife of this Mrs. Chichester, who is in fact Mary Corwithy. It's a very complicated uh, set of things, but I'll, st I'll stick with that. And then there's another set of children that are specifically named as the children of James Chichester. Well, when Savage made his genealogical dictionary of New England, he gave to William James Chichester's children. That information was taken and was incorporated into the Chichester, Chichester, Chichester Heritage Book, and <clears throat> so it's now supposed that, um, and then a lot of people just that are doing research on the Chichesters one way or the other have gotten their information from that, and now on various many web pages you can go and do a search on James Chichester of Salem, and it will in fact list <coughs> all the children of William Chichester as being his, one of them being James, and then attributing that son James the life events of the brother of William James. Um, supposed brother without any other evidence, but I have other evidence to show that it's um, reasonably accessible, and that comes under the under the um, that that level of assurance is a review, and I and that's a whole other topic. <laughs> it's a whole other topic. So it's gonna be very hard for me to, to articulate this. Basically, when auditors get a set of financial statements from a client, first of all, um, or accountants, the the client is responsible for the set of financials that are given to the auditor. The only thing the auditor is responsible for, in general, is the report. And there are three reports that at least in the United States, that auditors can, can write. They can write an audit, auditor report. And an auditor report is basically a report where they set, they do one of two things. You're, we're engaged to, to perform an audit, and we can have one or more conclusions based upon that audit that we do. Most of the time, uh, people aren't going to pay for an audit unless they know the result's going to end up being that the financial statements are free of material misstatement. And um, most of the time, since auditors aren't simply uh, willing to write a report based on what they're paid, they're supposed to be independent. Um, you know, people that submit their financial statements make sure that they're accurate before they give them to us, basically. And so, basically, what we do is we examine evidence, uh, sufficient competent evidence to come up with reasonable assurance that the financial statements are free of material of the statement. And that's the core of what I'm going to talk about when I apply this to genealogy. That uh, an auditor basically is going to need to look at um, sufficient competent evidence to, to, um, to, to have reasonable assurance that the genealogical lines are free of material of the statement. But genealogy is a little bit different than accounting. Accounting debits are always going to equal credits, and genealogy, well, we know everybody living has two parents. Those are completely different 
types of things and if you get one in genealogy if you get one uh, what I'm going to call parentage if you get the parentage wrong once in one generation everything else is wrong from there on out and so parentage is the primary material assertion that is made in a genealogical line um, <coughs> right okay the second type of report that that an accountant can do is called a review and in a review when we get our we get financial statements from a client we look it over and we only look at it in an analytical way we don't look for sufficient competent evidence uh, to back up the assertions <clears throat> so that we know that we're comfortable at the end of, when we're done with our audit that there's no possible way that there are material misstatements in the, in, in the financial statements when we do a review we look it over and we look at it over analytically to make sure everything makes sense that if sales last year were a billion dollars you know or a million dollars last year a um, billion dollars doesn't make sense we better start asking questions about that billion dollars this year versus last year okay now analytics are a little bit different in genealogy analytics have to do with um, likelihood and where a person is known to live during their life okay there are some lines in genealogy that the best you can do to say that someone to um, to back up the parentage assertion can only be performed literally through analytics and sometimes has to do when a, a family removes so I'll take my Chichester family uh, my uh, Chichester ancestors as, as an example James Chichester, Mum Chichester, 